Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, a few of the basic things that you can do with R, some of the simple commands just to get you started in R. You see what we're looking at here is we're looking at a spreadsheet in Excel, and so this is a spreadsheet of data, which I've saved as a comma saved value, so it's a comma delimited file. And I'm going to want to load this into R. So here's R, and I go to the cursor, and of course anytime we load in data, we have to load it into a data matrix or a data set, and we have to give that data matrix a name. I'm going to call this one test.data, and then I'm going to set that equal to, I'm going to use the command read.csv, read a CSV file, and I'm going to use the option file.choose. And you see I've got, uh, after file choose, I've got one open parentheses, two closed parentheses, at any rate. That opens up a window, which allows me to go search for the file that I've saved, and I just so happen to have it saved in my default directory, so right there it is, I double click, and that's it. And now it's loaded in. To prove that it's loaded into you, I'll type test.data, and you see a bunch of numbers there, and if I scroll to the top, you'll see all the data, and at the very top you'll see the column headers, so the data have loaded in to R. And uh, if I want to see, now uh, one thing you want to remember is that, um, you know, in your spreadsheet, let's go back to your spreadsheet, each column is a different variable, each row is a different observation. So you see I've got the sample ID, the date, the location, the latitude, the longitude, the chlorophyll. All those are different variables. They're all stored in that data set. In R we also call those data vectors and they each are named by the header on that column. So if I want to see all the vectors that are held in that data set, I can go names of test.data and here's all the different columns or all the different vectors that we have. Um, one thing that you can do then, if you want to look at uh, uh, different values within this, remember it's a matrix. Um, again, think back to the spreadsheet, it's a matrix of rows and columns. So say I wanted to refer to a particular value in this matrix, say in position 1, 1, I could type test.data, then use the square bracket, and then I'll, I'll refer to the row first and the column second. So, so that's row 1, and then column 1, close bracket, and it gives me this value to you whatever. And we look here and we see that that's in the first row and the first column of the data. You'll notice that it's not using the, the headers, it's using the headers to name each column. And if I want to see what's in um, column 2 of row 1, I'm going to hit the up arrow. You see if you use the up arrow, you can call back, you can just keep up arrowing and call back things you've already typed and then down arrow to go back to them so you don't have to retype. Now if I change this to column 2, you see its value March 11th, 2011, and March 11th, 2011. And so that's just one way that we can refer to values that's in a data matrix. Um, if I want to see all the values in column 1, I can just um, not put anything for the row, I can change this to column 1, and there's every value. So you won't be using this uh, square bracket notation a whole lot, but later on when we do some programming we build some commands, you will need to understand what we're doing in those square brackets. Now, um, an easier way, in a way that we're going to commonly work with our data vectors, is to just use them by name. And so if I just want to, uh, let me call back names again. And so here's all the different data vectors that I can work with. And so let me pull up this one called turbidity. Turbidity NTU and there's nothing. It says it can't find it. That's weird. It's right here. How, can it can't, how come you can't find it? Well, you have to think about that, that R knows it should be looking for a vector, but it doesn't know where to look for that vector. And you've got to tell it which um, data set contains that vector. And so one way to do that is to name the data set, test data, that's the data, the data matrix we're working with, then use a dollar sign and then type the name of the variable. And there are, there's the whole column that contains 
turbidity. That's all the values that's in the vector called turbidity in order. Okay, um, so that's one way of pulling up the data from uh, a vector. Of course, you have to type that the, da the, the data matrix name and a dollar sign, and that takes a while. If you're going to be working with a single data matrix and you don't want to keep typing it, what you can do is attach and then put in the name of the data matrix. Now, if I just type the word turbidity into you, see now it finds it. Because I attached the data matrix, now anytime I name a data a variable or a vector, it knows to look for it in this data matrix. And so attaching makes our life a lot easier. We, we can type less in the long run. Okay, um, so now we've got data loaded in. Let's work with it. We've got uh, many simple commands that we can do with R. It does simple math even without a, a data set. You can go 3 plus 4 and you get 7. 4 times 5. Everybody, you want to make sure everybody wait for it? 20! Hey, it's right! Um, so you can do any kind of simple math like that. Of course, you can do simple descriptive stats. If we want to know the mean of the turbidity, I spell it right, variable, we just type mean, and there's the mean. And if I want the standard deviation, I can just up arrow, change this to standard deviation, and I get the standard deviation. Um, just like with Excel, we don't have a built-in function for the coefficient of variation but I can make it. I can just say up arrow to get mean, oh, excuse me, um, we want standard deviation divided by the mean of turbidity in NTUs times 100 and there's the coefficient of variation. And so I can do these simple calculations. I can also do the calculations and store them in a variable to use later. So here's I up arrow again Here's what I just typed as far as the coefficient of variation. And if I name, let's, let's name a new variable or make a new variable called CV1 equals, okay. That didn't seem to do anything, but what it did is it took that value of the coefficient of variation and stored it in this variable called CV1. And if I type CV1, there's the coefficient of variation. Pretty cool. Um, so... That's just uh, some of the basic quick commands that you can do with R. Loading the data in is always uh, um, an important step. And uh, other things that you can do, of course, you can plot things. Our first graph that we always use when we're looking at our data is a histogram. So I can go hist of turbidity into you. And you see it brings up a histogram. And down here me. Uh, down here on the x-axis you see all the different values of turbidity and their frequency on the y-axis. So how often each one of those showed up. And if you want um, maybe some smaller bins, a little bit finer graph, you can up arrow and you can add the, the option breaks equals say 20 and it'll put 20 or so bins in there and it makes the the graph uh, a little bit smaller. Uh, one last thing that we can do is uh, do simple scatter plots. Um, let me uh, call up the names again. I don't remember all the variables I've, I've got. Okay, there's all my variables. Let's say I wanted to look at the relationship between um, rain and turbidity. Maybe the rain causes the turbidity to jump up. And so what I can do is um, I can plot the turbidity in NTUs. And here you'll see I'm going to use the little tilde, right, at the upper left kind of corner of your keyboard. The tilde is used a lot in R uh, when you're building a model, when you want to look at the comparison between an independent variable and a dependent variable. And so the turbidity is the dependent variable because we think it depends upon the rain. So I put in the tilde and then I type uh, daily rain in previous. So the daily rain in inches of the previous day. 
and I get an error. What happened? You see I mistyped. I did that on purpose. And just trying to show you that capitalization matters and R is very picky. So let's just up arrow. And we can arrow over and fix that. Um, if I didn't want to type all that, uh, I also could come up here and select daily rain inch previous. Hit control C. I could move my cursor to where I want it to paste and go control V. And you see it pasted the, the name in. Of course, I don't want two copies of the name, so I'll get rid of that. And when I hit return, here's a scatter plot with the independent variable on the x-axis, the dependent variable on the y-axis. And I can choose this and right click and as I can copy as a bitmap to go paste into Word or I can just use control C and I can open up a Word document. Here's a new Word document and I can go control V and there's a copy of that graph I just made. Pretty cool, huh? And so um, that's our brief introduction into R. And you can see how once you have the data loaded in, you can work with it very quickly. And in further tutorials, we're just going to introduce more and more uh, functions that we can do in R and how we can use this for all of our statistical analysis. So thanks a lot.